بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my dear Pascal colleague. Uh, this is the second lecture for my reflection over Charing Cross uh, 2023 Congress. My name is uh, Dr. Muhammad Omar al Faru. I'm a consultant to vascular surgeon. Um, as a general rule, when you read vascular textbook, you're usually four years old. That's why Rutherford come every four years. When you read scientific paper, you are around two years old, which is a work for the paper. When you attend the vascular congress, you are six months old, roughly. Uh, this is what is recent over the last six months. When you attend a vascular broadcast, you are sitting on the cutting edge. So when you attend um, a live case from um, uh, American Vascular Institute, you are actually on the cutting edge. Your knowledge is a combination of all these four things. Now, um, Charing Cross, uh, I've been attending for many years. It's one of the best vascular congress. It's a very nice combination between open vascular and endovascular. It's a green congress. It's been uh, 45 years now, this year, and I will try to summarize what I really grasp from it. Not necessarily every lecture is important. There is a lot of variation. Some lectures give you some statistics about progress of certain uh, uh, certain registry. They are not that important, but some of them are really important, and I consider them uh, the keynote lecture in that meeting. So, um, one of the uh, very important uh, lecture and very important speaker is Gustavo Dietrich. Uh, Gustavo Dietrich, he is the uh, uh, work in the University of Texas uh, in American United States. He is Memorial um, uh, Herman Hart and Vascular Institute. Uh, he's responsible for the Texas Medical Center or Texas Medical Aortic Center. He is an author of very important book uh, by Gustavo Dietrich, uh, uh, Endovascular Repair to Aortic Aneurysm, which is uh, luckily found in Vascular Digital Library. You can access uh, if you are a member in the library. Uh, whenever he speaks, it's a keynote lecture. He always speaks about cutting edge technology or very important message. This time he's speaking about TAMPA. TAMPA is a gore product, which is abbreviation of thraco abdominal multi-branch endoprosthesis. Uh, the technical aspect, it has not got FDA approval yet, uh, but the idea of TAMPA is to get an off-shelf device that can apply to any anatomy, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric, both renal. It's very, very interesting. I, th I think this is one of the best lecture in Charing Cross uh, this year. Now, uh, Gore is very important uh, company. Uh, we know it from multiple uh, C3 device for Evar and uh, C tag for the thoracic. Now, Tempe. Uh, the idea is to have an on off shelf device which is ready you don't wait for manufacture it has four built in pre cannulated ports to facilitate placement of a stent graft into the arteries perfused the perfusing the internal organ of the abdomen so it's one solution for everyone with like an abdominal debranching now this uh, uh, was an idea after a very nice paper, uh, which they have collected uh, 520 patients with all variant anatomy. And the Gore engineer sat down and said, well, we want to make a device that can apply to any anatomy. So you can see from this diagram, this is a T branch, and this is Tampa. Tampa, here, every dot, uh, equal to a patient where the origin of the artery is variable. So the beauty of Tampa is that it can accommodate any anatomy. Now, uh, this is the Tampa design. Uh, they started by having retrograde renal and anti-grade superior mesenteric and uh, 
sphere mesentic and celiac, but nowadays all the four branches are anti-grade. So there was a retrograde project started in Brazil, but they didn't continue. So it basically, it it's, um, as we said, it have a very short, a very short part in the thoracic aorta, which is considered as an advantage, and four, four channel with pre-cannulated guide wire. So this is the basic design of Tampa design. Now, when they started, they started, as we said, 2014 retrograde by Professor Pierre Silveria from Brazil. And after four or five years, the Gore engineer started to go ahead with the anti-grade design, which is four branches, all of them are anti-grade cannulated from transbrachial axis. Uh, and the first in human case was by Gustavo Dietrich, uh, and he continues the program uh, from that point. Uh, the, now, when he gave uh, his presentation, Gustavo, he mentioned a nice clinical case. Uh, I, I will show the slide how he presents the case, because it's a nice way for Junior to learn how to present a case of FIVA. This is a 75, he, give, he really gets into the basic necessary information, what you need to tell in your presentation. No fuss, nothing around, very strict. So let us see how he presented. 75 year old male was newly diagnosed asymptomatic eight centimeter extent of uh, type 4 thoracic abdominal aortic aneurysm. Cardiovascular risk include hypertension, hyperlipidemia, past smoker, stable coronary artery disease, diabetic, stage 2 chronic renal disease. He's on medication, beta blocker, ASA, uh, symphostatin, and hypoglycemic drugs. Now, his blood pressure stable, uh, his um, uh, neck no abnormality, his heart, uh, Right bundle, uh, blanche, uh, block, no murmur. Lungs are clear and uh, the abdomen soft, non tender. And here the abbreviation of extremity pulse radial, brachial, uh, femoral, popliteal, uh, carotid, uh, dorsalis, pedis, posterior tibial, and plus three or plus two or zero according to the strength of the pulse. So you can see there is good pulse everywhere. Now, the preoperative risk, chest X-ray, pulmonary function test, ECG, stress test, and echo, always a normal, creatinine is a little bit uh, elevated, uh, 0.92, volume um, filtration rate, what's the count, hemoglobin plate, so again, very sharp and up to the point. And here is the video of this case. Now, you can see uh, the CT angiogram, and you must learn to, to read it in uh, 3D. You can see this is the aorta. It goes here. Now, the celiac, this is origin celiac, superior mesenteric. Then you get the uh, enlarged aneurysm, and you need to see the renal as well. So this is how to present a CT angiogram. If you want to, in summary, you can put it like this. This is the diameter of the aneurysm. 8.3 centimeter. This is the proximal neck of the aneurysm, 5.5 centimeter, and this is a transverse section. And here is the origin of the celiac artery and the origin of the superior mesenteric artery. And here is how to put summary of the CT angiogram. You don't need to get the whole run, but this is the basic information that you want to get from. Now, Gore Tampa, uh, the design, as we said, have four anti-grade channel. It's an off-shelf device, so you don't wait two months for manufacture. There is um, uh, four portals. It goes from 20 to 24 French. So you have a preloaded guide wire system. So you get a preloaded guide wire into the four channel. You need a bilateral femoral and unilateral brachial axis, and they always use a VBX stent graft. So this is the uh, design, the four uh, inlays, and then you get the bifurcated graft, and then uh, you get the uh, other uh, other limb of the graft, the epsilateral limb, uh, to put it in. 
Now, the preloaded guide wire system using upper extremity approach, this can be modified later on that you can do the preloaded from the trans femoral approach, which is called phys physician modified devices, but at least this is the device that they want to get the approval on this device. So you need the trans brachial axis. Uh, with the trans brachial axis, you put guide wire into each of the four channels and you put them into each of the uh, target vessel. So this is very important. So you can see deployment, you get the proximal deployment and you get a three-way catheter. And then from this catheter, you can elate all the four vessels. So this is the basic idea. He also mentioned Gustavo, his uh, standardization. Now it's nice to hear standardization of master of the technique. He uses GE Alia hybrid room. He used only fusion. He used high definition cone beam CT. Uh, he is overhead position and no CSF drainage. He said he used it on request. He used monitoring on MEP and SEEP. Open surgical exposure to the right upper brachial artery and percutaneous to both femoral artery. It's a nice summary, really, and it answers a lot of debatable points. You put open femoral or percutaneous, use percutaneous, use routine CSF or not, no routine CSF. It's quite reasonable, uh, very reasonable, really, uh, platform. Now, the procedure start. It's a very long procedure. What I want you to know is you go from transbrachial into the graft and you cannulate the four vessel. I wouldn't go on much into detail of the exact technicality, but this is the basic idea of it. Um, uh, this is a cannulation of the celiac. Now, uh, and this is the procedure when you start and then you can open uh, one limb. So you start to perfusing the lower limb because all this uh, the body is under uh, ischemia. Now, after fin finalizing uh, the four vessel, here is the uh, anatomy, or here is the post-operative uh, fill. You can see here is the artery. Here is the endograft, celiac superior mesenteric, beautiful, both renal, beautiful, and to continue. It's actually fantastic. Fantastic uh, result from off shelf device, which is the future of fenestration. Now, uh, Gore Temple uh, started to get an FDA approval. That is why they are open to the, uh, so far they have 13 patients with uh, pararenal and extended type uh, force rock abdominal. Technical success is 92%. No mortality, no dialysis, no spinal cord injury, and 51 of the 53 target vessels are patent. This is superb results. It's a fantastic. It is 30 day result. That is why a lot of centers are very eager to start to use Gore Tampe. That is why in the discussion, uh, this is Professor Jenkins. Uh, he worked in London. The, he applied 15 times. Uh, to get uh, uh, Gore Tampi, but there is an anatomical committee which will tell you if you are anatomically super or, or, or not. And out of this 15 cases, he was only uh, able to get three cases accepted for Gore uh, Tampi to be used. So you can see they are very selective. In the future, once you got FDA approval, then you will get uh, a lot of abundance of indication. I think it's a very great device. It's very important for you to know, although you are not going to be using it soon, but the knowledge is very important for junior and senior vascular surgeon to follow the technology. So we are waiting for FDA approval of uh, Gore Tempe. And thank you very much to Gustavo Dietrich, uh, one of the leaders in vascular surgery and endovascular to the award. I hope I have covered uh, to you uh, one of the very important uh, lectures. I think it's uh, a key uh, keynote lecture in Charing Cross 2023, and I wish you all the best.